Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. It is Classical Appreciation Month, at least here in the States, so I think we are going to primarily check out some classical music for the uh, comment request this month. I did post a community post, a text post, about this uh, a week ago or so, taking requests for classical music, and this is why. So, last month, I think it was, we listened to a an excerpt from a Bach song uh, performed by Hilary Hahn. Come to find out, she has a very unique interpretation of the track, possibly influenced by her take as a modern violinist rather than one who specializes in Baroque performance. Um, but what it led to is a very interesting, two very interesting characteristics. One is a rigidity in the performance, it kind of loses its form a little bit and feels uh, static, possibly, in some aspects. Not all of it. I had mentioned a lot of great dynamic work in her performance. But another is the length. This one is a bit more quantifiable than the idea of rigidity. Hers was like 22 minutes or something, and traditionally it's between 13 and 17 minutes long. So, one of the comment re requests that I landed upon was actually in that, uh, it was a comment in that video. It said, it would be interesting to hear your reaction to the same piece played by someone who is more trained in Baroque performance practice. For instance, check out Sunsuke Sato. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We have a performance from Shunke. Nope, Shunsuke? There we go. Uh, of Violin Partita Number 2 in D minor, specifically the Shikone movement, composed by Bach. So let's dive into it and see how he interprets this work. If you'll recall, this entire movement is based around uh, theme and variation, with our theme being in the foundation, the chord progression itself, as we'll hear variations upon that throughout the track. Thank you. 
it's really interesting because if I'm not watching, I'll continue that thought in a second, I promise. I love the way the section's breathing. The precision on each of these notes is ridiculous. The smoothness of the pedal tone is just ri ridiculous.
The acoustics in here sound phenomenal as well. There's a real smoothness to this. The articulation boggles my mind. What a journey.
All right. That drastically improved my appreciation for this track. And I'm going to be making some comparisons because I think the song itself, I don't have any different concepts of it. Basically, if I were to analyze the music itself, the composition, it end up being pretty much identical to uh, the Hilary Hahn one. Uh, so I guess, if that interests you, go check out that that one as well. But I do want to talk about the music, the performance of it. I think this drastically alters everything about what I believed was going on in this track. And it comes down to one major component here. One thing I mentioned about Hillary. Okay, so I just want to put a preface on this as well. I'm going to be comparing these two. I don't think there is an objectively better version. I do have a favorite between the two. But I also don't want anyone to think that I'm throwing shade at Hillary for how she performed this. It was still a master class in violin work. It is something that many violinists uh, would never be able to pull off. It's something I'll never be able to pull off. So <laughs> I'm definitely coming into the criticism from a place uh, that doesn't look too well. But that's tends to be where my criticism comes from. A lot of the things I criticize are things that I could never do myself. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, as usual, a lot of this is going to be subjective, and uh, just try not to get too emotionally connected to one person, and don't take what I'm saying as mean-spirited, I suppose. Alright, with all that said, Hillary has a very rigid performance of this, and it was something that I even commented upon in that reaction that I had mentioned it would have sounded better with multiple instruments because there wasn't a way that both of the lines, the foundation and the melody, could be played simultaneously without these very disjointed uh, shifts in passage that brought me out of the experience. This was something that happened a lot in the performance, but more specifically in the latter half, I think is where it really became a hurdle for me and my enjoyment of the piece. That doesn't exist here. This blows my mind. To hear the same song, hear the same passages, but it feels fluid. The pedal tone ideas, the foundation ideas, the chord progression feels like it perfectly fits within the melody line to where they're not two separate ideas that she switched that, well, he switches in this case back and forth on, but they're interwoven into one another. The melody is the foundation, and the foundation consists of the melody. And I think the key aspect here is going to be levity of, well, how each note is played. When it comes to the pedal tones, and this is what I was talking about um, earlier on, I don't understand how this person changes the volume of notes so quickly. It blows my mind. Because like I'm I'm a woodwind player, right? I, I, I play bass guitar, right? And that's kind of close to this, but oh most of my experience is trumpet, um, and flugelhorn and, and brass instruments. So like to constantly jump between different pitches at different volumes requires a lot of really concise breath control. And so I tried to interpret this as an analog to bow control. And 
Pressure and Speed, I think. I picked up a violin last month. I'm not very good at it yet. But I can play notes. And I think that when you increase pressure and speed of movement, that's when you're going to get louder notes. And so he is so finely controlling those two aspects in his bow playing at such a speed while also changing strings, which is a bit more difficult than I would have ever thought. <laughs> I don't know what was in my head. I, But I never really knew that the violin was bowed. The strings, uh, they have higher strings and lower strings, and it kind of makes like a bridge. Um, and so like you have to like kind of reach your bow around the strings to get the one you want. And like I said, it's weird that I never really knew that. I guess I just never paid attention to it. Um, and it's kind of subtle when you're watching videos. Like I'm looking at one of the uh, the suggested videos here, and it has uh, Shinsuke with his violin. And unless you're really looking for it, it's like an optical illusion where the angle that the camera is at, the strings just look straight across like they would on a guitar. And I guess I just never really picked up on that detail. So, like, he's having to, like, move around the strings while playing multiple strings and ensuring that some notes are quieter than others while just dropping, like, a hundred notes every, I don't know, like, five seconds or something. It is bonkers. But what it creates, though, is an emphasis on specific elements of the movement. And so the foundation line underneath ends up being these lighter, bouncier notes. I also feel like there is a little bit of rhythmic syncopation going on. Not a lot. We're not going to be moving into like a, a swing style of uh, eighth note ideas. But I do feel like the foundation notes in some of these sections get less time to exist than the melody lines and what it creates is this little bouncing pattern underneath it rather than having everything at equal power and so it doesn't sound like two equal parts vying for attention it sounds like a little bouncy part underneath what you're supposed to be listening to and it just comes up across so fluidly and it like I mentioned, it's not a separation of ideas. It brings them together in a way that even some of these sections that I heard them are like, okay, I remember when Hillary played this. I remember this is what it sounded like. And this is just a totally different sound. The idea is there. I can kind of still see the bones of it, but it's presented in such a different way that it almost sounds like a brand new section to me. It is bonkers. And see, this is what I was talking about last time on the Hillary video too is interpretation of music uh, and I had mentioned her specific interpretation and some of the ideas that I perceived might have been her own uh, I definitely didn't land on all of them but I think I pulled out a couple that are true that weren't present in this one so definitely part of her interpretation of the work but it's such a strong aspect of classical. You can listen to five different versions of the same song and hear five different songs. It's very different from today, where if you want to hear a popular song by an artist, you put on the definitive original version. You can listen to covers if you want. You can listen to arrangements. But there is a definitive version of it. The one perceived by the artist and performed by the artist. We kind of don't have that for a lot of older classical. We have the sheet music. We might have some audio, possibly, depending on the era. But a lot of it's going to be interpretation. What, what do we think Bach meant when he wrote this stuff on sheet music? And so we end up with stuff like this, where we have two very different versions of it. This one, though, because I didn't have so many hurdles in appreciating it, I kind of got lost in it. 
Hillary's I was very critical minded the entire time because it was difficult for me to emotionally engage with it. I, around every corner I found something that was halting my ability to just enjoy it. Uh, I found something a little aggravating about the performance and I spoke about those grievances but this one I just kind of got lost within it. It's it's a flurry of sounds and dynamics um, in a, in a way that just immediately hit me. And once I got over the fact that there weren't going to be any of these uh, harsh transitions between the foundation and the melody, there were many moments when I just absorbed this. And it took me on the best ride. The highs, the lows. Dude, okay, so <laughs> early on, I said if I wasn't watching this video, and then I never finished that statement. <laughs> and I... I promised I'd get back to it. Here we go. If I hadn't been watching this video, unlike Hillary's version, which certainly sounds like a single violinist fighting to get all of these notes played on a single instrument, I would almost swear, if I didn't know anything about this track being, you know, a solo violin part, that this was at least a duo. Maybe even a trio in some parts. It is mind-boggling how smooth all of this comes off. Um, yeah, and the thing is, is I wish I was a, a not a better violinist, well, I do wish I was a better violinist, but a, a more versed violinist. Um, maybe not necessarily that I could play it, but I understand the instrument a little better. Because... I wish I could talk about what specifically Shinsuke is doing here to create this more fluid idea. Like I said, I still have that idea of levity in the foundation, which sort of separates it a little bit sonically, which allows it to be uh, an idea that fits underneath rather than competing. And it's actually interesting. I mentioned that there's a separation of the ideas. We have the more accented uh, melody and the uh, levity, the brief uh, foundation underneath in some of those faster parts. But the separation is actually what makes it gel together better. Whereas Hillary tried to give them equal weight and they ended up feeling separated. So that's interesting. If you try to make them too similar, they end up feeling disjointed. And if you actually treat them as two different ideas, they merge together into one. <laughs> Music is a weird beast. Uh, I think there was one more thing I wanted to talk about, and for the life of me, I can't remember what it was. But I'm going to have to watch more of this dude. Oh, there was. So there is one last thing that I think really separates this performance, and it's the voicing of the violin. Now, once again, I'm not super versed in violin specificity. You want to talk about trumpets? I'm there all day. I can tell you about the different metals and the different colors that they have. I can talk to you about mouthpieces and how they can manipulate sound, all sorts of stuff. But I'm not too sure about violins. I am sure that what material the bow and the strings and the, the body are made out of are going to influence sound. I'm sure there's other aspects too. And I'm sure much like the trumpet, the way that the violin is made, not the materials itself, but how it's made, how it's shaped um, and stuff, has been modified over the years too. So... I'm not going to sit up here and try to pretend. I know exactly what's going on here. But this violin sounds more traditional to me. And I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else. It sounds very different from Hillary's. Hillary presents a, a timbre with her instrument that feels very modern. 
this doesn't. This feels like what I would expect the music to have sounded like. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and say that I think he has a, an authentic violin from the Baroque era. Uh, that sounds a bit ridiculous, but there might still be people producing violins with the same process or materials of the time, or it might have nothing to do with the Baroque era, and it's just a specific flavor, uh, timbre that he enjoys. Maybe it is still uh, based on modern ideas, but... Uh, you know, just a little bit different. But there's something about the voice of this instrument that feels old. And I don't know how much that influenced it. It could be like a very tiny thing. I just noticed it and it didn't influence my, uh, my listen to this at all. Or it could be something that greatly influenced. I really don't know how much influence it had over my listening experience here. But I liked it. When the first note came in, I was like, this is a violin. <laughs> Not that Hillary wasn't playing a violin either, but I don't know. There's just something about this. It's, it's warmer. It's almost wider even. And it has a sharpness to it that I think is an acquired taste. It can be kind of uh, piercing at times, especially in the higher range. But to me, like that's what a violin sounds like. I think that's kind of been softened over the years. Anyways, like I said, I'm not real, real sure about what I'm talking about there. I'm just trying to figure out what I heard and why that might have been different. So I guess that's going to wrap this one up. Again, not a lot of talk about the song itself, but you can always go check out the uh, Hilary Hahn reaction, and I do dig into the music there. This was mostly for the performance. Uh, those are my thoughts on Shinsuke's performance of Bach's Violin Partita Number no. 2, Movement Shakone. Let me know what your thoughts were. Let me know if you like this one more or less, if there's anything in this one that stood out to you. Uh, if there's anything you also want to add, your own perspective to it, maybe you like both of them for different reasons. I mean, who knows? Let me know, though. <laughs> Not in the comments. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you to this menu right here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. We do have one more... Uh, request today and I think it is yeah it's going to be another classical track I'm really excited about getting more classical music on the channel and this felt like a good month to do that so until next time remember to be critical not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos mm -hmm.